Okay, on today's video, I'm gonna actually talk about Salesforce Marketing Studio. Um, and specifically, if we wanna uh, add to that, Advertising Studio, that's the ad pro, well, the, the integration product that Salesforce has for Salesforce users that want to integrate their CRM with Facebook uh, and other ad platforms in order to do, uh, which for now is uh, Facebook, to be able to advertise to the people in your Salesforce system. So on this video, what I am going to cover is kind of how it works. What is it worth it? Of course, which is the most important thing. What kind of returns you can get from it? And are there any alternatives to get the same results you're going to, you could ultimately get from this advertising studio, which the concept of it I like, but without paying that big hefty price, which you're looking at five figures uh, in order to do it. And of course, if that's, if this is the only way to do what this advertising studio offers was to actually buy the sales for, uh, or uh, lease the Salesforce product, if you want to call it lease. Uh, I would probably still do it for most companies out there. Uh, you know, in the if you're already doing uh, more than a couple million dollars a year in sales, I would still ultimately do it. Now I'll explain why. So anyway, on this video, I'm going to start with kind of how it works why people use it, what Salesforce says, why you should use it, and that kind of thing. And from there, I'll tell you about implementing you know, something like it that'll save you money and not actually have to use the product physically uh, as well. And, and therefore, then why you still want to do this workaround because it certainly is worth your time doing the stuff that this advertising uh, product does, this integration does. So as like uh, most of my other videos, I have a list of things that I want to cover here. The first thing of which is uh, to ask what Salesforce Marketing Studio or Advertising Studio to, to be specific does or is versus what they sell it as. So you're a little uh, small diagram here that kind of talks about it's a flow chart as well. How they, that was what technically what the definition of a chart like that is where it's like if the user does this then do this. If the user doesn't do this then do this. But if they do do this, then do they also have this? If no, yes, da da da, just like that. Um, the advertising studio, which, so first of all, as I touched on before, the advertising studio, what it does is it allows you integration to use the data in your database that's stored on Salesforce now in your Salesforce account to advertise with on Facebook so you get a better return on your Facebook ads or just to be able to emphasize the um, you get a higher return out of the database that you have, in other words. And all that is predicated on, as if you talk to their sales department, actually increasing close rates, which is, I agree, that's certain, there's no misrepresentation there about uh, downing Salesforce in any way here, other than maybe the price that they're charging, but you know, it's worth a lot, that's why they're able to get it. So they sell it as a way to, um, increase your close rates. And here's the whole thing with that. Just like if you do B2B sales, you know follow-up already is crucial. It, or another way to put it is, in marketing in general, frequency or the amount of times that you, you speak to somebody or advertise to them is more important than reach if you do no follow-up at all. So people that do B2B sales know this, but and so what that, Taking that one step further, that should actually move into your marketing as well. Uh, if you do direct mail, don't send them one piece. You're going to get a better return sending them multiple pieces and, not just, and send it to overall less people. To a, a point, of course, uh, but there is a point and almost never is at one time. That's why remarketing and the online advertising world matters so much and why almost everybody know, does it that is in the know. Um, so what the product... The integration does is it allows you to set up rules within this yes no flow diagram matrix that says you know the, if the customer um, has turned into a lead already or they downloaded a white paper then 
we can actually advertise to that person with custom messages for, or at least custom as far as, you know, people who already uh, downloaded the white paper will see message A versus if they never downloaded the white paper, they could see potentially or perhaps the ad for the white paper, right? That's the general idea behind it. And then also taking that a step further, if once they download the white paper, we want to have a different message. We say, uh, you know, give them another white paper since we know they're interested in white papers already, then we can get a better return out of that person overall in terms of opportunity to close rates than if we did it. Um, or a better even yet example there would be if they downloaded the white paper, we communicate with them with a case study, which has a, a default testimonial attached to it to build up people's trust and so that they believe what they see and just in general, people buy from the, who they know and trust and like, and that adds to that. So this is actually not a, a new concept at all. Uh, again, if you talk about just straight up offline advertising and so forth, order of marketing, as I talked about, but also it's also not new at all in the world of email marketing. For a long, long time, back when email marketing first started, it was people just emailing to a select list now you could put up rules in most email, uh, most email programs like um, GetResponse, Aweber now, which I use, but also a um, product like Drip, which is directly in, uh, about these kind of uh, if and uh, not or uh, diagrams in order to identify who should see what email and exactly when, if they, if they, uh, are in on this list versus this list, they can see they're gonna get these set of seven emails. And if they click on email two, they're gonna be able to see, uh, instead of just the next four, they're gonna also see this extra one, that kind of thing. You can find that at drip.com. It's a very popular product because this stuff really works. Pain in the butt to, to set up, but really works. And if it did it, they wouldn't be as big a company as they are. So anyway, with that, what, what, what is the deal with that? So when a user contacts sales, and so what, like with Drip and with the advertising studio, when a user contacts sales, they should see a follow-up about product A when they are already shown interest in product A already. So just like the email, like what the Strip program does or how it's typically supposed to be used, if you offer... Um, Let's say uh, you, you you do different types of consulting. If they're interested in consultant type, consulting type A, well, they should see follow-up information about case studies, white papers, whatever, about that type of consulting versus another, which makes sense, right? If you just send the same communication to everybody and you offer several distinct types of services for very distinct types of class or groups of people, that messaging is going to be so watered down, it pretty much is worthless. And so that's why it's so important to do. Um, and this actually allows you to have an ad physically on Facebook show up for the person who's taken, who was uh, on, uh, they downloaded a white paper for product A. They can now see a, let's say a case study for product A, specifically for product A, just the way that I was, so that you could see the build up here, uh, what I'm getting to. Now, the next thing here, uh, could be everything you send out by email already or could go a bit further than that. So what I mean by here, this here is, so the, now that you know in general the basic case study or uh, way that this, this advertising studio works and it's like being like that drip product I told you about, uh, if all you did for the advertising studio and what you're doing through drip.com, if you clone drip.com, whatever formula that you're using there, which you may be doing inside Salesforce because they have integrations that can do it too. If all you did was just take the, the model of follow-up that you're doing for people who not prospects yet, are prospects, you know, are set up as a deal, potential deal already, so on and so forth, and you did it through your advertising studio integration through and on Facebook, you would make a lot more money. I can tell you right off the bat, uh, whatever works in an email literally will work 10 times more or better. Uh, if you're through the drip email program you had, 
it set up in a semi-sophisticated way or even just a little not sophisticated, you're making an extra hundred grand a year off of that. Well, you could make an extra million dollars a year just by having the ads show up for the same people, say the same things in general, same things, right? Some things you can't do, but in general, you'll make 10 times more. Now that is a real number because I do this stuff all the time. I don't do it through advertising studio and there's a way around it, like which I'm going to get to in a minute, like I said. So that, there's the importance of it. And that's technically, if you don't know where to start, I would just do that. Just do what you're doing through the, the uh, email drip program uh, campaigns that you have. Uh, within that, because email, you could be a little bit more personal. What I recommend doing is uh, if you have a white paper or something, the email can come from you, the salesperson. You should never do it from the company. It should be from the person, the salesperson. That's a a big tip, by the way, take your email uh, program and have it tagged so that if they talk to salesperson A, all the white papers and whatever you drip out should be from person A. But if you take it one step further, you could have an article on your on your site. But even better, if you have an article written and posted on a trade publication that's online, you could have it ghost written by the salesperson and then in your email drip, but then also going further here. Uh, your ad campaign can send it. You could say you could pretend like the person, the ad itself, is being shared by the salesperson, and what you know, and the ghost of the article you want them to read is by that salesperson. So that person will be like, okay, now I can trust the salesperson for sure. I'm way more interested now. So that's something that it works big. Of course, if you didn't have it published on another third-party website, which, by the way. Roughly speaking, you're going to have four times the power behind information that's on a different website uh, that, oh, particularly if they say it about you, but I want to say twice as effective if you wrote it yourself and you've got a, it, it's a guest post or it's a sponsored post even. Uh, for the most part, people don't notice it's a sponsored post. Uh, then having it on your own site. But even if it's on your own site, have the salesperson write the article of it or if you want, you could you could make copies of the article so that if they talk to salesperson A, the article looks like it's written by person A, and if it's if if they talk to salesperson B, it looks like it's written by person B, so on and so forth. That's kind of sketchy, but I can tell you it works. You can decide on your own what you want to do, and then of course through email, messages from the owner or salesperson should also be in that drip through through email that you're doing. But of course, you can't really do that with ads which is the drawback. But the f big thing of why you get 10 times more results when adding ads to your overall drip program, if, if you will, is because people don't always see an email. They don't, maybe it goes to spam. Maybe they never got it in the first place. Maybe they get 100 emails a day. They don't have time to check their email. Maybe they are trying to get through so much email every day. They're click, click. They, they don't spend much time thinking about it. Versus your Facebook ad can show up literally over a 90 day period every day until they click on it and then it'll stop showing up when they click on it. You could actually set it up that way and that's actually the way that I recommend. And then next time if they clicked on the one ad, then the next they get to see the next ad until they click on that and so on and so forth. So they're guaranteed to see everything you're showing them. That's where you're getting your 10x difference, difference and increase in sales from this whole drip concept from. So anyway, how to avoid the extra price in using the program now. Now that you know how to use it and why to use it, and if you need, by the way, more information about what else to add in your drip campaign program, uh, you could go and search any of the articles I've written about remarketing sequences or on this channel, just type in, look for remarketing sequences. I'll use, like people do through email, but because I'm an ad guy, I'll have a testimonial and then a case study, and then they'll have an, a thing that says what our reviews are through Google uh, and Yelp or whatever. And then I'll have another email that talks about the cost benefit analysis uh, that we have and sending people to a specialized article for that that gives the user the cost benefit analysis they may need. And then I have another one that talks about the in-depth features of this individual thing that they're looking for that wasn't that may be in the sales process itself, but also throwing it out there again. So what happens is they, they just absorb all this information. If the sales typical sales cycle window that you have is 90 days long, well, you could have those ads show up for 90 days and they'll keep seeing more and more. 
adds to the point where when they eventually make a decision, because a lot of times they think on it for a while, right? And the bigger they are, kind of the more process they have to go through. During that time, you're slowly kind of brainwashing the person to know that you're the best. Who are they going to buy from at, at that point of waiting that long and seeing all the super high quality information you, they've been presented in your ads? Somebody who didn't communicate with them or only followed up by email or by phone, which usually just goes to voicemail now, or they, all the really, really good information and familiarity brings increases in close rates. And the more of the follow-up you do, you know, as long as it's quality, the more of the effect increase in sales and de uh, sorry, an increase in close rates you're actually going to get. So do, I recommend fully setting up a very sophisticated funnel for each person, for each different main type of, or category of product or service that you have so everybody can see five, six, seven different messages, rotate it out, and that's, you're going to get by far most of your uh, more of your results that way than like one or a very simple uh, what I call remarketing funnel. So how to avoid the price though? So you could do everything that I just told you about there on your own. And the way that you do that is through a thing called Google Analytics Custom Remarketing Audiences. So in other words, you set up Google Analytics tag on your site, site-wide in the head a portion of the site. And then if you go into Google Analytics under Custom Audiences, or audiences by itself, you could set up an audience however you want. It could be somebody who downloaded the white paper and then downloaded this white paper and then this white paper. That could be its own audience, which then you could define running your Google Ads itself, which I recommend doing Google. And in this case, that you're doing it on your own, you can use Google Display Network, which is a lot more powerful overall than just Facebook ads because if they don't go on Facebook, which for B2B, they don't really go on Facebook very often. Uh, a lot of times so you could get them when they're reading the news or whatever reading the sports scores on Monday um, So you basically can set it up however you want it could be uh, set up ultimately if they, if they made um, You know they they, they uh, went to the, a sales page and filled out a form there literally any possible way that you could divvy people up like you can with like the, you know, the these drip email programs you could do with the ads it's just a matter of setting up a manual audience for each person. And then again, it could be cascading lists. So if they get on list A and they did what you want them to do, they, that list can, you can put a negative audience is what it's called. So they don't see ads from that particular, for what is designated for that one type of audience. And then they're now put on another list until they do something you want them to do. And then the next one, for the most part, for me, if I need the user to see five, six, seven different messages for me to increase our close rates, I'm not worrying about that. That's why it also kind of is a moot point using this advertising studio because I'll just rotate all seven messages out over and over again because each one has its own uh, value to the user. And the more times, just like politicians, when they have these political signs, the reason why they blast them everywhere is it because they think you've got to have them all out there to see one time the, the person's name. It's through name recognition. You get the trust. And the more times you see it, the more you trust it. And it's the same thing here. So even if they've seen it once, if it was good, you re, you'll remind them. Then they'll be like, oh, yeah, I remember that company. Get a good feeling. And then they see it again. You know, of course, you can limit it. I recommend so they only see like one ad a day out of your sequence. But it'll rotate out. And then they'll see each message quite a few times or five times a day is fine as well. It's called through frequency capping. You could do that, but I'll run it on Facebook and I'll run it through Google and you could set up the custom audiences the same way on each platform. With Facebook, it's a lot less able to be customized, but you could customize it a lot. I won't get into the details here on this video because it'll go on too long, but on Google, you could pretty much do everything you want. And technically, if you only did it on Google, if, it, if Google is the only one that can do it the, the way that you want to follow up, you could make most of the same money anyway, just doing Google, 80-90% um, of the money uh, that you would make with both. But Facebook gives you some, so there, why not? Therefore, you got to set up this whole ad sequence. Might as, might as well get it on both. Uh, the other thing you could do is use a tool like DriftRock, which will automatically sync as most CRMs to Facebook to do. Um, also, 
it, it, it's on, on, on Driftwalk now, I think you can sync up Google Analytics to your CRM as well. So that when somebody downloads a white paper, automatically they go on your remarketing list. Uh, you know, of course, you can do that through Google Analytics itself. Um, but they have integrations where you can actually uh, set that up to where you could do, you, so it's kind of like a light version of this advertising studio without the big, huge cost. Um, advertising studio is about 10%, 20% of the price. The, the uh, advertising studio is so it's something you can look at if you want a little bit more of a, you like the pretty interface and the drag and drop interface that the advertising studio lets you have. Um, or, you know, for the most part, you don't need the drag and drop because you could just write on the spreadsheet what you want each user to see and in what order. And then you could set up your audiences, label your campaigns for each segment that you have on your spreadsheet, and then you're done anyway. But with that, so I have a little matrix here. You want to normally spend what you're spending on ads now or your marketing now if you're not doing any follow-up. Take 10% of that budget. You could reallocate it if you want. It's to your advantage. Uh, clearly, if you do it, if you don't have any remarketing now, and then have your ads show up for, <clears throat> uh, take 10, that 10% 10 of the budget just goes to the follow-up, uh, particularly in this case, uh, follow-up in that once they already become a lead and before they come a sale, of course. Uh, could obviously people that bought, and then you can then market to get them to buy another product that they show an interest later on, which could be its your thing. That's just another possible option. Um, and the tool itself is $2,000 a month for advertising studio at the time of making this video. For that, and you have to buy yearly, by the way. Actually, it's a fit so that's uh, close to thirty grand, right out of the, you know, out of your pocket right away. Versus this uh, Drift Rock, a couple hundred bucks a month. They don't ding, and you don't have to pay a year in advance. You can let the campaign make you more money first uh, before you, or just to, you know, pay for it just with the increase in sales because you will get the increase in sales if you do what I mentioned on this video. I've, I've done this over and over again. And the ad spend, you still got to remember the cost of the ad spend, but it's the 10% of your budget should be allocated to this uh, re remarketing to leads to increase the close rates like this advertising studio is supposed to do for you. And you have 30 grand a year on top of the ad spend if you use the advertising studio versus Drift Rock or like for me, I'm not even using Drift Rock unless I can't do something with Google manually or with Facebook manually on top of that uh, cost itself. Drift Rock, by the way, if there's no way to, I, a lot of times like what I'll do with that is you could take, um, uh, actually I won't get into it out of this video, but there's a lot of different things you can do with Drift Rock pretty much so that you can close the gap of what you might want to do with Facebook, you can customize it with Driftwalk. I, I back that product a whole lot. So anyway, that's uh, the Salesforce marketing studio slash advertising studio. Uh, what, is it worth it? Yes, it is. If you make a couple million dollars a year in sales already, you could still get your return on that 30 grand per year cost, but you could also save yourself a lot of money doing what I do and setting the the remarketing audiences up your uh, self, setting them up yourself. If you like this video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. I have a video just like I described to you today on how to make money with PPC. Uh, so, you know, you should consider subscribing. I also at guaranteedppc.com slash blog. I have a step-by-step -step, uh, money-making PPC strategy guide there where I write articles and it'll tell you how to actually put these campaigns together physically step by step for you if you prefer that. Um, information you're not going to find elsewhere in terms of the detail and the quality of the information, which is why I wrote it. And um, you know, if I, you have any other questions about the Salesforce uh, marketing or advertising studio, uh, get, leave a comment down below. I will get back to you and let you know uh, what your answer your question and anything I didn't cover here or you still have questions about ask anything you want, I will uh, gladly not, uh, not mind what question is. There is no bad question. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope either way, whether you're using ad advertising studio or not, you try this out for yourself and uh, take advantage of the increase of close rates. These type of ads that do the, that, where you're following up users the way that I uh, said and described here will we'll provide you, really will work. and. Um, 
make you another 10 to 100 percent more in, in revenue off the same exact advertising that you're doing now to bring people in with no follow-up at all.